Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my web services tutorial. Over the course of the next couple of videos, I'm going to cover JSON, XML, remote procedure calls, SOAP, and REST, among many other different things. I was originally going to push all this stuff into one video, but I decided to break it up and make it a little bit more understandable, but I'll put the videos out very quickly. We're going to really focus in on JSON in this tutorial, so it's completely understandable, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, most of this is going to be code, by the way, it's not going to be me typing out names and things, but I just want to give you an example of what JSON is. And I guess first off, I should talk about the fact that a web service basically just allows software written in any programming language to communicate with any other programming language over a network. So it's way more simple than it's often made out to be. And specifically, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, but don't let that confuse you. It basically can be read or created with any language, and it doesn't have to just work with JavaScript. Now we have an example over here of some data that we would like to store. But first off, I'm going to basically just cover exactly a very simple example. So let's say we want to store phone information. And specifically, we want to store a home phone number, which would be 412-555-1212. And then we also want to be able to store a mobile number. And JSON is basically just key valued pairs. So you're going to have home is going to be matched up with the number there. And then mobile is going to be matched up with a another number. And the reason why JSON is very easy to work with is it basically is only going to store numbers, decimals, strings, booleans, arrays, objects, or null. And like I said before, everything is a key value pair. Now one way that we could store this inside of JSON's sort of ideas is we could come in here and put a curly bracket and then we could say phone and then we could put another curly bracket and put all these guys together and then have home inside of here like that with a colon and then the number that we want to work with. And I'm going to give you an example of working with multiple different or all the different types of data available. And then we would put mobile inside of here. Okay. And then we would close that off with two curly brackets. And that would be an example of how we could model this data right here inside of JSON. Now, if we want to do something a little bit more complicated, like we want to model all of this data over here, that's going to have strings in it, it's going to have numbers, it's going to have booleans, it's going to have null, address we're going to store as an object, and then phone in this situation we're going to store as an array. Well, how we would do that is just go curly bracket, and then we would go first name, and then we could put Dale, for example and a comma. Last name is going to work exactly the same because it's also string data. Age is a number and the only way that's going to change is we're not going to put quotes around it. A boolean, as you can see the key part always is in quotes is just going to be either true or false. Married, let's say we don't know what that is, well we can put null inside of there. If we want to create an object inside of it that is represented with address as the key, we just put another curly bracket inside of here and then we go in and put the other key value pairs. So there would be street which is just going to be a string as well. City, state, Washington in this situation. And whenever we get to the end of this address object we don't put a comma, we just put a closing curly bracket. Then if we want to model the phone as a type of array, we would just come in, put phone, colon, or square bracket, and then we're going to have object types inside of this, so let's just go type, and type is going to be modeled, or be given the key of home, and then we have number, and you basically, when you're working with JSON data, all you have to make sure you do is that you close all your brackets in the right way. It's very simple to work with. And also you don't put commas where they don't need to be. We'll put a comma there and then we'll have another curly bracket and here we're going to have type and this is going to be mobile and in the next tutorial I'll cover XML and maybe a couple other things if I can fit them in. And then close off that curly bracket and then you want to also close off the array and then close off everything altogether. So that is how you would model this in JSON and we're going to be using PHP to basically automatically put the curly brackets and the quotes in here. And I have a link to all this typed out in the description underneath the video. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a class called Student DB. And if you don't know PHP, I have a link to a tutorial on PHP in the video. And I'm also going to be using MySQL. I also have a link to that. Basically, what we want to do here is we just want to model out everything that we want to have stored inside of here. And in this situation, I'm going to be pulling this data out of a database so I know exactly what I need to use. 
if you're wondering this is the database it is called or the table is called students and here are all the different fields that I want to create inside of this object that I'm calling student DB so I just went ahead and printed all those out you can see first name last name email street city state zip all the different things that you just saw in the database that I just showed you now what I'm going to want to do here is come in and create a constructor which is going to build all of my objects for me and just as a review its function and then we're going to go construct and I'm using Komodo edit 8 which is free if you'd like to use it feel free and then inside of it I'm going to pass in all of these different variables that are going to be used to create my student objects. And there they all are. And now throw some curly brackets in here and initialize all of them. So everything that's going to be passed inside of this, I am then going to store inside of the objects that I create. So there's first name, and I'm referencing the object version of first name here, and then I'm going to take this first name that was passed in here to construct it. And as you can see, there I initialize and set those values for every one of those. And that is all I'm going to do with studentdb.php. So I can save that. And now I'm over in json underscore code.php and I'm going to start writing some JSON. Now, if you want to be able to tell whomever is receiving your data the content type, it's very simple inside of PHP. You just go header and then you would go content dash type and this is very important to do application JSON there you go pretty simple and that's all you need to do of course you want to spell content type right and that is it that's all you need to do and then whoever's reading that data immediately is going to know that it is JSON data now we are going to comment this out for now because we want to be able to print everything real nice on the screen and we're not actually going to be sending this data if we want to go and get that student DB that we just went and created we just go require once and student db.php and now we have that student db class inside of here and we'll be able to use all that to create student objects now if we want to be able to code a json string into a format we'll be able to use this is going to not have anything to do with the student database I'm just demonstrating how to decode json it's extremely easy to do with php you just go json decode and in this situation i'm just going to create some json here so i'm going to say first name there's my key and then inside of this I could say Dale and then come to the end of there and there you go now if we want to be able to print out this object on our screen I'm gonna keep this very simple I'm just gonna do a variable dump and I'm gonna do that with JSON data and then I can load this in the browser and we can see exactly what it looks like and I just loaded this inside a local host and I have everything in the WS folder and there is JSON underscore code dot PHP and there you can see exactly what that's set up like it's an object and it's going to tell us how many characters are inside of the string and there is the key part and then it's going to have the actual key right inside of there all loaded up and nice looking now if we want to do something a little bit more complicated we could come in here and create a address class and we're going to get into pulling the data from the database and everything. I'm just starting off here real simple. So let's say we want to come in here and create a street and a city and then finally a state. We're then also going to come in and create a constructor and the street is going to be passed inside of there as well as the city and then of course the state. And then just like we did before we're going to say this street is equal to the street that was pulled inside of there or passed inside of there as well as the city and then finally the state and I kept that completely separate because I want the address to actually be modeled as an object and it's going to be modeled inside of an object inside of another class and that other class is going to be the class student just so we can see everything exactly the way it's meant to be and inside of this class I'm actually going to use the format that we looked at previously which is this guy right here first name last name age enrolled all of this stuff and because I had address set up as an object that's why I created the address class so I went and created these and address is going to be an object in this situation of course now for the constructor here it's going to be passed first name of course and everything else and there that is and then of course I'm going to have to assign the values that are passed in to our object right like that and you can see that we are passing in strings in each situation age you can see how the boolean is being passed in you can also see here that we're creating an address object and here we are creating an array that is going to hold our home and mobile telephone numbers and then of course make sure we close off this new student class 
and get outside of the class area and then we're going to create ourselves a student object so let's just call this Dale Cooper is equal to and it's going to be new student and then we just need to pass in all of the information on our student and there's basically everything we need to know about our student of course put a semicolon here now let's say we want to throw a couple break statements in here just to break everything up on our screen and now we can take this raw object that we just created for our student and we can encode it into JSON sounds like it would be very complicated right let's just call it Dale data is equal to we just call JSON encode and then we pass in the object that we want to encode into JSON super simple and everything is great now if we want to actually use real data from a database well, we're going to have to go and get our code that is going to allow us to connect to our database. And that is in MySQL underscore connect. And it looks exactly like this, what you see right here. And I covered this in my PHP MySQL tutorial, which there's a link in the description. Let's jump back over here again, though. Now, if you want to go up two directories where this file resides, you're just going to put in two dots and a forward slash, two dots and a forward slash. So two directories, just like that. MySQL I connect. PHP, and that is going to allow us to connect to our database. Pretty simple. Of course, you want to put this inside of quotes. And now we're going to get real data from the database and convert it into JSON data. As you see, it's very easy to just decode or encode based off of whichever function you use. Now, the very first thing we're going to want to do is connect or check our connection to make sure we have access to the database. And if we do not, we could say something like connect failed string inside of there and we could then say my SQLI underscore connect error and then if that happens we could exit out of our script otherwise if we come down here and we haven't been exited out we know we have a database connection so let's query our database and let's say that we want everything from students where and let's just say we want student IDs that are either one or two. So we want the student ID for the first and second student. That's the data we want. We're then going to create an array here that's going to hold all of our student data that we get. And then we're going to say if the result DBC is a reference to the connection to the database and the query itself. So if we got a result from our query asking for those two pieces of student information, make sure you put query inside of here. Well, while we keep getting results, we are going to continue asking for said results. And we go and get the results, and then we call fetch object. So as long as we have objects to get, we want to keep on getting them. Now what I'm going to want to do is come in here and actually print out all of the student information on the screen. And I'm going to use print F in this situation. And basically, I know that I'm going to need 13 different strings that I'm going to print out on my screen. And the reason I know that is over here, I have 13 pieces of data to print. And you can see that by just coming down here. And I'm inside of MySQL, inside of a terminal right here. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm going to have to put a percent sign and an S inside of here for each of those. So there's 9, and 11, 12, 13. And then let's say that I want to throw a break statement inside of here. And now what I need to do is match that up with each piece of data that's going to be pulled over inside of this object for each individual student. There's going to be two of them, of course. So we just go object and then we say first name. And then we do the same thing for every single one of these other guys. Last name. And of course, the first name and last name come from first name and last name as they are stored inside of the database. So there's all the data that I'm gonna print out on the screen, which is everything. Now what I'm gonna do is actually create a student object and then we're gonna convert it into JSON. And we could just say temporary student is equal to new student database, which is where we're gonna create this. And then to this guy, we're also going to pass in those objects. So we're going to get all of these objects we have right here, pass those in. And then if we want to store them in the student array, reference right there, and temporary student. So all this information comes from the database. Okay, so outside of this, put an echo statement. And now if you want to surround the student data to show that it is you know, student data on two different students in this situation, or it could be many more than that. We're just gonna put in our curly brackets like this, get rid of that, and then we're gonna type in students. So students is the key for this. What's that square bracket mean? It means it's an array. So that's gonna print that out and encapsulate all the student data for our JSON data. We can now take the data array we created and convert it into JSON. And let's just store this inside of Dale data 
again and to encode it JSON encode and student array which is where we stored that data that we pulled from our database and Dale specifically is in index 0 of the array the first one and we could just say echo Dale data if we then want to separate our results we could go in here put single quotes put a comma and let's say that we want the student data on separate lines as well we'll go and put a break statement inside of there which is the way that JSON data is structured then we could also just store this in Dale data this is going to be the second student which I can't remember what their name is so I'm just going to have it be Dale data JSON encode of course you would never do this in real life you would do second student or you would put this inside of a for each block or a for loop to cycle through it but I'm just demonstrating this very quickly here so student array get the second student because we asked for two students in our query up here we cycle up see we wanted the first and second student right there so come back down and then to finish this off we could print out the second student which is stored in Dale data and then end it with a break statement as well and then close the JSON data all together single quote square bracket there we go and there we go and now of course because we printed out all the JSON data we're gonna be able to come in here and close this database connection Whoop, caught a little bug I made here. Instead of Dale date, put in Dale data like that. File save it. Now we can jump over into the browser. And if we execute it, you can see here everything is structured. There's students, there's all the student information with the first student that we called for, as well as the second student we called for. All exactly the way we want it, all structured using all the rules that are defined when passing JSON data. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover XML and maybe some of the other different things that I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.